Now, earlier, the minister engaged with community members in Stilfontein and agreed that other ways have to be found to get the miners to surface. Let's find alternatives. Together with you, go to Kalanji, a seven son. What man? A seven in the world. Over the other, the guy came to the other, 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 is causing other, or is attracting other illegal activities or unlawful activities as Bumela and Glow. Police say over a thousand people have surfaced in the northwest. We have 1,187 1, people, of which 1,186 1, are people that are alive. We had one person who was referred to the hospital to receive treatment, and we have that other body that is, uh, uh, was retrieved, that is uh, uh, decomposed. We cannot tell at this stage what is the cause of death. That is that other process that must be undertaken to have the toxicology taken, samples taken, processed, and the pathologist will tell us what could have been the cause of death. Now joining us is Makosonke Butelezi, who is the spokesperson for the Department of Minerals and Energy. A very good evening to you, Mr. Butelezi. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. I guess before we talk about the scale of illegal mining in South Africa, let's just stay on this story that we've been focusing on in Stilfontein about these illegal miners. We've heard from the Minister of Police that they will be um, trying other ways of making sure that more people come up to surface. As the department, what is the latest from your side and what are you doing to try and help those efforts too? Yes, I can actually confirm that uh, what the minister has announced in terms of enlisting the assistance of mine rescue services, uh, we are involved uh, as the department since we do have a relationship uh, with, with the mine rescue services. Remember, these are the services that uh, are there for when there is a, a rockfall or any disaster in uh, legally mining operations. So we have been involved in terms of facilitating that process. And were you at all privy to um, Minister Kumbuzo Chaveni's response to say that actually they will not, government will not be helping these illegal miners. They were not sent there, so they should come up to surface on their own. Uh, yes, uh, we had them in the minister's uh, comments, but I'm afraid I cannot comment on, on the minister's uh, um, utterances. But what you are doing as a department is assisting? We are assisting, as the minister of police has indicated, we are facilitating in terms of uh, enlisting the help of mine rescue services. Okay. Um, Mr. Botelezi, you know, there's been a lot of um, conversation about this, you know, the proliferation of illegal mining. It's been going on for a long time now. As the department, what are you doing to try and curb this problem? Because it seems like it's just getting worse. Well, there's two things that we are doing. Uh, the first thing is obviously uh, making sure that these ownerless and derelict mines, uh, we take resp full responsibility for them in terms of uh, rehabilitating them as well as uh, closing them. And to date we have closed about 295 holdings and shafts as the department and we spend on average about 131 million per annum to do that and in our plan we, we, we plan on average to close about 40. And uh, as you can understand uh, we cannot be able to close all of them, because according to the conservative estimates, there are about 6,100 uh, derelict and ownerless mines. And these are the mines that were mined long time ago before the new dispensation. You cannot trust the owners, and then the responsibility, we bear the responsibility as the department to close those mines uh, on those shafts. That is the one thing. But there is another element, uh, there's another program that we have, which is now small scale mining. And uh, this program really is aiming at historically disadvantaging individuals who want to participate in the mining industry. And we also have the fund that people can apply for. And in fact, in February this year, we opened, we called for applications 
we received a lot of applications and those who qualified were about 20 and were about to award them uh, since they have uh, applied. So these are one, but these are two of the interventions that we have uh, as the department. But obviously, uh, we, are also, we also have the uh, artisanal small scale mining policy that is really looking at how we best we can assist artisanal small scale miners uh, in South Africa and grow the industry and graduate them to junior miners as well as, uh, you know, your normal mainstream uh, big conglomerates. Yes, and formalizing um, artisanal miners as well has been on the cards in the department for quite a while now. It was in 2018 when um, you awarded two mining permits to thousands of artisanal miners in Kimberley in, in the Northern Cape. But as you're mentioning these numbers as well, 20, um, lots of applicants uh, in February this year, 20 were approved. Here there were thousands of artisanal miners. However, we do know that there's far more um, illegal miners operating in the country as well. So as you are processing these applications, it's not at the speed of the number of illegal miners that are in the country operating. Look, we have to separate the two, right? Illegal miners are illegal miners that engage in uh, criminal activity. And uh, they are characterized by gang, they are characterized by violence. And they actually, there is a whole uh, ecosystem of um, um, uh, syndicates, uh, as we, we, we all know, who are responsible for manag managing the whole system. Now, um, we cannot uh, really um, compare artisanal and illegal miners. But however, we are saying, if there are people out there who have been retrenched and who have been working in the mining uh, 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 industry, and uh, perhaps they want to perhaps go and maybe there's still a residue of ore that has been left by uh, big conglomerates, and they think that they still have the skills and the ability to pursue that, they can form a company or a, 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 a cooperative register with CIPC from a company, come to us and apply for a mining permit. And if they meet all the requirements, uh, we will grant them the mining permit and then we'll take them through the system and we will assist them uh, as government. So that's, that's the message we want to put out there. But I can imagine if we have to go to still Fountain right now and call all those illegal miners and say we want to formalize them. Already they have handlers, they have people mm. that they work for. I'm not sure what will be the response, you know? Mm. And we have had workshops uh, in, 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 in some of the hotspots. Uh, for example, in Rivoli last year it was a hotspot, working with the mining forums there. Uh, you know, uh, informing them about these programs and everything and how we can support them. Yeah. And you won't get illegal miners coming to those forums, unfortunately. Yeah, so, so that is why I'm... And that's... Uh, I'm sorry to cut you off there. It just leads me to this next question. We're just going to run out of time soon. It sounds like the department has a plan for artisanal miners, but you don't really have a proper plan for illegal miners. Because as you're saying, if you go to Stillfontein now, those um, illegal miners are probably not going to qualify for this artisanal mining program that you have as a department. So as a department, outside of closing those holes that keep reopening as soon as you've closed them as well, what is your plan for illegal miners specifically to curb that? We don't have a plan for illegal miners. We have a plan for people who want to be formal. If people are involved in illegal mining, they want to repent and they want, they are saying, we are enough of this. We want to join the mainstream. We want to do things properly. Then those are the people that are conducive to our message. Those are the con people that we can have a conversation with. I mean, illegal miners, as we have heard, they spend months and months under the ground. How are we going to reach them? That is another thing. And the, as, 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 as you attempt to even get closer to them, they will fire at you. So uh, we don't really have a plan for people who are involved in illegal mining. However, we do have a plan 
for people who want to enter in, uh, into formal mainstream mining industry through as artisanal miners, as small scale miners. Yeah, that begs the question that maybe legal mining will be here to stay. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for joining us. That is the department spokesperson for minerals and energy, Makosonke Butelezi, saying they don't have a plan for illegal miners.